mean drag. No? Maybe set. Shoot. Okay, I call this meeting to order at 7 p.m. If everyone would pr please rise. Daniel Augustine, would you please honor us by leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> okay, welcome, welcome everybody to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee meeting on Tuesday, January 9th, 2018. <clears throat> I would like to, my name is Stephen LeBranch, I'm the chairman. I'd like the members to please introduce themselves, starting with Brian. Brian Lapham. Tony Farmers. Danielle Augustine. Maureen Buckley. Regina Barnes. Steve Anderson. Jones. David Mara. And we have for our minutes recorder Barbara Kravitz. Thank you very much. Now, um, tonight we have on the agenda to go over any remaining Warren articles, and then after that we will review the uh, final, it'll be a final budget review where changes can be made. Um, I would like to ask Christy to please come up and, and talk to us and give us a little bit of a um, some instructions as to um, what we talked about this afternoon, Christy. Before the Warren Articles or when we're talking okay. about it? Okay, we can do the Warren Articles first, okay, since they're on the agenda first. So, does everybody have the um, Warren Articles, the last uh, Warren Articles that came in? I think Christy handed a copy out to everybody. Okay, so um, we have a Warren Article it's called Christmas Parade. Warren Article Number Twenty. Oh, they're all Mark Twenty. Yeah. Well. Okay. Warren Article for the Christmas Parade on Petitioner John Nine with at least twenty-five Hampton registered voters shall the Town of Hampton raise an appropriate three thousand dollars to pay to Experience Hampton Inc., the organizer of the twenty ten to twenty seventeen Hampton Christmas Parades to help defray the expenses of the twenty eighteen Christmas Parade and related. Activities, majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen 300, fiscal impact note, financial department. The, estimate, the estimated 2018 tax impact on $3,000 is 0 .001 per thousand valuation. Um, do I have a motion to recommend this by Mike Plouffe? I'll second. Seconded by Steve Henderson. Any discussion on this? Warrant article. Seeing none, um, we'll vote as to recommend or not recommend. Those in favor? And I see everybody. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Oh, actually, I was going to abstain. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, Regina abstained. Barbara. Everyone else voted yes. Okay. We have another Warrant article here. Grist Mill Dam um, <coughs> on petition of Kim Gordon. Grondon, Grondon yeah. and 25 or more registered voters to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $100,000 for the purpose of providing <coughs> additional funding needed to complete the reconstruction and association associated activities of the Grist Mill Dam, also known as the Mill Pond Dam, and to amend the town of Hampton Warren Article 38 from 2015 by changing the required comp completion date to until the repair or rebuilding of the Grist Mill Dam is completed or to March 31st, 2020, whichever is sooner, subject to the appropriation. The sum of $100,000 of this amount is to come from the town's unassigned general fund balance, a fund containing unexpended appropriations from prior years as of December 31st, 2017, and no additional amount to be raised from taxation in this tax year. This will be a non-lapsing <coughs> appropriation per RSA 32 column 7 comma Roman numeral 6 and, six and shall not lapse until the work is completed or or by on it says or completed or or but should say on or completed on or by March 31st 2020 whichever is sooner majority vote required no tax impact note the additional funding is requested as the original value of the project was based on an opinion of cost from preliminary plans completed over five years ago. Competitive build bids have been received for the reconstruction of the dam and are based on actual field conditions and a fully engineered design 
the state of New Hampshire Dam Bureau required the town of Hampton to either repair or remove the existing dam or face daily fines for not complying with the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services letter of deficiency dated July 2012. It is, if this warrant article does not pass, a future <coughs> warrant article will be required with additional money to meet the requirements of the state. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 300, uh, fiscal note no t tax impact. Would anybody like to make a motion to recommend this? I'd like to discuss it. Well, David, first just make I'll a motion. I make okay. a motion to, uh, to recommend. recommend. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Brian, and go ahead, David. It says in the middle of this, and I think we dis I discussed briefly with you guys beforehand, but it's the town's unassessed general fund balance. Unassessed. Uh, unassessed. How much is in that balance to begin with? And the other aspect we went, is this the library fund type c c consideration type? But then isn't that general fund also help us, us with bonds? If there's X amount of dollars, we get a lot, we get a lower interest rate on bonds, or if that this fund starts to deplete, would we have higher, which would therefore cost the taxpayers? That's a question. Yeah, that's a question that I'd like perhaps the, manager the town manager or the financial director to um, answer, please. All these chairs. <laughs> I know they're all they're in a, they're all been set in funny places. Yeah, rearranged. Yeah. Yes, they've been uh, adjusted. Yeah. Adjusted. Adjusted. Yeah. That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking in here. Yeah, there you go. Um, it doesn't affect our bond rating. It doesn't affect our interest. Um, we we have a well balanced financial por uh, portfolio. Uh, the state requires us to or recommends, I should say. That we hold five percent, we're closer to ten percent. We have more than six point four million dollars in that unassigned fund balance, so there's plenty of money in there too. What, what is it? How does it get? If it gets lowered, how does it get replenished? It's replenished every year at the time the audit is done. Uh, the unexpent appropriations automatically go into that fund uh, that have been <coughs> raised at the previous town meeting, and any revenues in excess of that applied to the tax rate goes into that fund by statute. The, the uh, auditors uh, provide the audit for that and the Department of Revenue approves it. And then we use usually a hundred, anywhere from 600000 to a million dollars to decrease taxes from that fund each year. So how does it not affect the tax rate? Well, it doesn't affect the tax rate because it's not money that's raised. Uh, it's, that well, it was is, raised at one time. Well, yeah. but it's no longer raised. The appropriations have already been have, have already been in, in taken by the Treasury Department and the money is in the bank. So it's, it's not going to be raised again is the point. Uh, and yet you have the money there to spend to do different projects within the community and without having to impact the tax rate itself. And what we do, we do take up to a million dollars a year out of that fund to decrease the taxes each and every year. We are required to maintain money in that account the state which comes from tax money which comes from tax money and if we don't maintain money when I first came here we maintained a balance of zero there was no reserve fund and we were spending several hundred thousand dollars a year in interest to borrow funds that's what I was kind of leading to earlier right. with my question right. we don't borrow funds anymore because that's yeah, six point four million dollars is sitting there and we roll that in with the tax payments and that money keeps us funded without mm -hmm. having to spend those Extra I'm, I'm missing a little bit on the explanation, and it's me, not you, that the $6 million had to come from somewhere, and I'm saying, well, it was overages in years when we didn't spend it, it gets put into this bucket. We, in other words, I'll, I'm interpreting we collected $100 million, we needed $98 million, right. and therefore we had $2 million left over. So rather than giving it back to the taxpayers, they thrown into the slush fund. Not a slush fund. I'll call it a slush fund. Uh, it's still not a slush fund. It's a statutory <coughs> fund. It's a who? Statutory fund. Statutory fund. It is required fund. by statute the fund be there. Which before was zero. What be happened before? Let me let me give you the story about how this all transpired when I first came here. Um, we did an audit the first year I was here, and uh, I think it was the second selectman's meeting I attended. The audit came in and it said we had $747,000 uh, 
remaining from the previous year between appropriations and revenues that weren't either received or not expended. And there was an immediate motion by a member of the Board of Selectmen to take that $747,000 and apply it to the tax rate. And before they could vote on it, I said, then I will have the treasurer here next week and we'll have a, bo a borrowing ready for $747,000. And they said, why? And I said, it's simple. You appropriated $25 million worth of expenditures and you received $20, $23 million worth of revenue. You're $2 million short. So you, you, your mind is $2 million in, in actual cash. So we came up with a process whereby we would start saving money and put it, put it into the unreserved fund balance instead of trying to expend money we didn't have. Now we have the money. David, I think that you, when you have to go out and it's called a TAN loan. Tax anticipation. Yeah, right, yeah. TAN loan. But are you all set, David? Kind of. It's it's having a it's having some extra money so you don't have to go out and borrow it before anticipation of taxes, okay? And because it, what happens is that if they don't, we don't start collecting taxes until June. Right. Right. Well, they've got to have some money to pay the bills, and if you have nothing, then you've got to take a tan loan out. The treasurer does. Well, in the old days, we had a tax bill once a year. Now it's semi-annual. Someday it may be more. Right. Yeah, there are towns that actually issue it uh, monthly now. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh. It, it can. It depends upon the town and how you want to, uh, you know, do things. Okay. So, uh, my, uh, yeah, Mike. Yeah, Tim. Do. Tim, please. Are you done, David? You can call I'm me done. Joe tonight. <laughs> are, you, are you done? Hey, I'm done if you call him Joe. <laughs> no, I'm not calling Mr. Jones Joe. Go ahead, Tim. It is required to have an unassigned fund balance or an undesignated fund balance whatever they happen to be calling it this year. Right. But there is no requirement in terms of the amount of money in there. It could be zero, right? Legally it can speaking. be zero. Legally speaking. Yeah. All right. So I hope that answered the question and gave it more clarity. Uh, and, and Fred's uh, history is generally accurate, I think. Uh, we've grown that, under, that uh, unassigned fund balance uh, the last 11 since, years. since his uh, tenure began, yeah. basically. But I want, to, I want to speak to basically that. our working capital during the year. I don't want to get into a deep discussion on that because it nice. gets all, all kinds of philosophy and we don't we don't have time for that because we're always going fast, right, Steve? Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, but I do have to do a little bit of history here um, on this particular Warren article. Are you going to speak on the Warren article itself? Absolutely. I wish you would. <laughs> um, no, because, no, this is important, David, because... This board, this isn't the first time, this committee, this isn't the first time we've had this. Address so, this issue. Yeah. Tim, please yeah. start with the uh, history. Uh, as you'll note in this uh, Warren article, it refers to uh, the 2015 uh, Warren article number 38. Uh, and, and basically it's taking that date in that Warren article and extending it out uh, another three years, right, Fred, basically? And that includes the uh, appropriation that was in that one. Yes, it does. Yes, that appropriation yeah. hasn't run out yet. Right. So that appropriation uh, from uh, Article 38 in 2015 was for a quarter million dollars. Yeah. One, one would think. But if one looks more carefully, that Warren article did the same thing. It actually extended a Warren article from the previous year and took the appropriation from that year and lumped it in. Right. Do you remember the amount? It seems like it was four hundred and fifty. It was four hundred thousand dollars. We're talking about twenty fourteen, which was Article fifteen. In that particular. In that year, particular. Well, it wasn't a. It wasn't a non-lapsing foreign article. Okay, but go ahead, Tim. Please continue. I don't mean to interrupt you. So that's when this whole discussion of the grist mill dam began. It was really in twenty fourteen, and in twenty fourteen, the selectmen put a warrant article out. Uh, to decommission the dam, appropriated four hundred thousand dollars for that decommission. Right, Fred? Yep. Tim, which, by the way, was the recommendation of the state of New Hampshire. Right, go, go ahead, Tim. Sorry. That that Warren article passed by seventy-two point four eight percent to decommission the dam. <coughs> During the, that year, nothing was done to decommission the dam. The private petition warrant article, so-called citizens warrant article, was then produced in 2015, Article 38, to take that $400,000, add $250,000 to it, to repair the dam. 
So now we've got six hundred fifty thousand dollars to repair the dam. With an unlapsing foreign article. Right? Yeah. And now today, um, basically three years later, since this money is going to expire if they don't use it, this warrant article seeks to extend that six hundred fifty thousand dollars in terms of its date and add another hundred thousand dollars to that, making a grand total of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, three quarters of a million dollars to repair this dam. Did I get those numbers right, Fred? Well, I don't have them in front of me, but I'm going to trust you for so. Okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what is interesting to note, a couple of things in my mind is this. The pond that this dam protects, or creates actually, right? Creates. Maintains. <laughs> the no, the Without right that dam, right. that pond wouldn't exist, right? Where'd the exactly. beaver go? Actually, it would. It'd be a stream. It'd right. be a different yeah. place. Right. Yeah, it'd be a stream, right? No, actually, no. The the the, the, the dam, if we were not there, the pond would be in a different place. You know where it would be? Yeah, further further back on the existing pond. Oh, so it would simply be on the existing pond. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on, on the, the pond, it, depending on the beavers, correct? Well, no. <laughs> well, the beavers it don't play actually, on this one. That's a different dam. <laughs> it actually would. Uh, the original flow went down Springhead Brook. Uh -huh. and came out uh, on, on a river, the, the uh, Dows River, uh, into, into the, uh, into the uh, Meadow Pond. Okay, so this Warren article that I was referring to, and that this current Warren article, this proposed Warren article, refers to in 2015, unlike the previous one, which passed by well over 70 percent, this one passed by five votes to, to repair. 70 percent, 72 percent said, Get rid of the dam. The subsequent Warren articles by five votes said, no, let's fix it. Okay? And now we've got six fifty and now we're gonna add hundred thousand dollars more to it, three quarters of a million dollars to repair a dam that the overwhelming majority of people in this town wanted to get rid of to begin with. Would you hold it, oh Tim Tim's talking. Tim's talking. Furthermore, Fred, am I not correct that the land that this water exists on is not owned by the town, but owned privately? Well, there's some debate about that. Mm. So we can't even be certain that the water that we're seeking to preserve actually sits on town land. We do own the water rights. Yeah. And as well as the right to drain it. <laughs> so now we've got, if we pass this Warren article, three quarters of a million dollars to preserve water on what is largely, if not totally, private property. And no one can actually say clearly that who owns it, and that's a whole nother level of dispute. Much less likely to be a dispute if there's no water on it, though, of course. And of course, there is a neighborhood around that which enjoys the view of the water. And they're the ones that drive this war up. And I certainly appreciate them wanting to, to preserve their view. But I think the taxpayers are also equally wanting to preserve their money. <laughs> Tim, can so, I, I'm going to interrupt you for just a moment, please, okay? You said that during the year prior to the 2015 Warren article, nothing was done. No, there was something done. It was called a guerrilla marketing campaign, okay? You may remember that. I remember it very well because there were certain people, the very people that benefit the most, appearing at every meeting everywhere for that entire year, before that warrant, that petition warrant article that passed by five votes, okay? There was a very heavy marketing campaign mm -hmm. that went on, okay, to, to recreate this grist mill water dam. Now, first of all, just to make sure everybody understands, the grist mill building that's sitting there right now, do you want to continue? Tim? Yeah, I would like to finish it. Okay, okay. go ahead. The, the dam has got nothing to do with the grist mill. The grist mill is a building which is non-functional relative to the dam. It was once upon a time a grist mill. That's not the original building, remember? Right. That was gone many years ago. The one that's there now is just a reproduction of it. It was never a, an actual working grist mill. Okay, just I believe make that sure. dam was put in like, what, 300 years ago, something like that? And, uh, a couple of days ago. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And, and uh, of course, it was done without EPA approval, as we can all know. Right? So this was just some guy that wanted to do some gristing around with, with, uh, with grain. And he just he, he just threw up a, a dirt and dam, all right, an earthen dam for the no. most part. No. One little part is not earthen, but if you go around the rest of it, it's all earthen around the property. Like if someone dug a hole out to hold the water. 
and then you got the dam where you can control for the grist mill. Uh, at least that's how I saw it when I went to visit that property. Um, in any case, it is not a naturally occurring not a naturally occurring pond at all. It's not <laughs> on uh, town-owned land, at least not provably owned by the town. Um, three quarters of a million dollars now. We're going to keep going. It's just, this thing just keeps on going. It's like a nightmare. It never gets done. Always need more money, and it's always hurry up. We're going to get this done because it's historic. Well, it's not historic. As uh, the chairman just went through, there's a lot of elements about this that is not historic. But even more, even more abhorrent to me is the last phrase in this Warren article. If this Warren article does not pass, a future Warren article will be required for additional money to meet the requirements of the state. That is just a flat-out lie. The state wants to remove the dam. We already have the money to remove the dam. There will be no additional Warren article required to remove the dam, will there, Fred? Yes, there will. Well, we already have the money. No, you don't. <laughs> we have 650. You've spent it. What? You've spent it. $650,000 we've already appropriated, <coughs> and nothing's done that I can see. All the engineering work, all the, all the work with the state, the federal government, the Army Corps of Engineers, all that work's all been done. And it all costs even, even, even before this petition to Warren article originally came in to redo the dam, yeah. we spent a whole year meeting with the Army Corps of Engineers in the state of New Hampshire and all these other federal and state agencies. How much of this appropriation has already been expended? I can't tell you that. I don't have, I don't have the town records in front of me. I'm not going to guess at it. But the reason there's $100,000 here is because we're $100,000 short on the appropriation for the bid that was received to complete the work. How much was that the bid? town ordered it? I don't have the bid with me. Christine, you have the number? I have the November financials. I don't know. I think, um, actually, these are the other yeah, November. Um, 533980 is left on the warrant article. Right. But there could be more bills, though, because they just finished getting all the uh, bids so in, I believe, right, Fred, for the price? All the bids and the engineering so work is finished. Money. So there's well yeah. over half a million dollars there yeah, present. And, and it's going to cost an additional $100,000 to do this under the state's to, to do requirements. The, repair. the state also required, the requirement was not to <coughs> rebuild it. We either could rebuild it or <coughs> decommission it. Now, decommission costs a lot less money, right? And the town voted to rebuild it. Well. 72% voted to decommission no, no, no. Well, it. Please no. let me finish. I'm going to make your point. 72% voted to decommission it, and a year later, by five votes, the town voted to repair it. Which was more than the 72%. No, it wasn't. Sure it was. 50.12%. That was the 2015 vote. 50.12%. Did I? The town received a legal petition from a group of citizens. Right. Okay? No. And the town voted to, in fact, rescind their prior authority to, to, uh, to, to, to demolish the dam and to rebuild it. These are the costs that are necessary to, in fact, do that work. Right. And so if this one article doesn't pass, that one article in 2015 is, uh, becomes moot, right? Because it expires. We'll end up having a new warrant article for funds to demolish the dam. Well, a new one article for that, but we'll already have. What will happen to that over half a million that we have now? It'll we'll go to surplus. It'll go to the unassigned fund balance. Right. So when we have that new one article to decommission, we can actually say we're going to take it out of the unassigned fund balance because we just put the money in there. Right. It, it could be assuming right. you're assuming a lot, and I and and you know I spent 30 years in public works, and I can tell you your assumptions are incorrect, because you can't sit here and tell me it's going to cost six hundred thousand dollars to remove that dam. Well, and to take the necessary steps Would that are necessary to dredge most of that pond okay. in order to stop this, this thousands of cubic yards of material behind that dam. If the dam is taken down, those thousands of cubic yards of material have to be removed or they'll end up down on High Street. Are you suggesting that the cost to decommission is not necessarily less than the cost to repair? Is that what you think? What I'm, what, what I'm saying is the cost of repair could be less than the cost of decommission. Okay, if you, if you. you watched the films that were presented by the state, particularly the state of Maine, where they decommissioned a number of dams yeah. up there and they actually put excavators in to tear the dam apart to yeah. remove the water behind it, and the amount of silt and material that came down that river when they did that, you're not going to have a high street. You're not even going to have a meadow pond because you're going to have to dredge that when you're done because you'll be flooding all those houses out down there. 
and you also have no water control for, for major storms on this particular facility, and there is a pond there, even with the dam gone. Otherwise, the dam wouldn't have been built. The dam was built for only one purpose. The dam was built to, to power a grist mill. Right. Okay? There was a pond that didn't come up to where the dam is now, which provided the grist mill. When they built the dam, they moved that pond up to where the bridge is, or to where the I dam is now. But there was a pond there before they did that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that water is going to go someplace. And right now, the area there where it did go is all developed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how many houses do you want to buy? Well, um, I'm happy with the house I have now, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if, we ruin, if we ruin structures because we change the root of all that water, <coughs> and remind, remind yourself now that when we had the 2007 floods here, that 60-inch culvert that serves that pond surcharged over North North Main uh, North, North Shore Road. All right. Okay. It itself proves inadequate. Yes, it is inadequate. Mm. Yes. But that water is all going to go down now where there are developments. If you yeah, if you get another day, it becomes a it, it, you know it, this is a serious problem. I don't want to diminish it, uh, and I think I stated the history accurately. And this problem because we I hear from. My, my emails, we all got swamped with emails about two Warren articles mm -hmm. concerning flooding that's going to be coming before us, or has already, and <clears throat> it seems to me uh, that, you know, those houses, well, I agree, I, I, I'm sensitive to the flooding thing. I mean, if, if, if we're allowing building to occur in areas that are known to be flooding, then we've got a problem with our governmental process, in my opinion whether it be planning boards, zoning board of adjustment, or whoever, our land use boards are allowing construction on property that are known to be flooding regularly. Stop reaching assumptions, which are incorrect. Okay, tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, well, they're incorrect because the existing drainage system works properly. The houses I'm talking about will not be flooded if the water goes down over this dam and goes into, me into Meadow Pond. Yeah. If you stop that function, it's got to go someplace else. Oh, I those, acknowledge. Those I acknowledge what you're saying. Tens of thousands of cubic feet of water per minute are going to go someplace else, and they're going to go into areas that have been developed, and there are going to be problems when you do that. But that 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 uh, because of the t what has the town has allowed to be done in the past was that area was plugged up, and this water goes where it goes now. Right. And, 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 and you're going to undo that. No, I don't want to undo it. No, you may. I am. I am stating the history of the situation. Okay, as, as accurately as I know it to be. Okay. Well, you, you're not familiar with the engineering problems that are engendered in, in, in with this That's particular true. dam and, I, and, and, I think and it the speaks, material behind it. I think it speaks to the larger hydrology problem we have. Um, um, I, 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 I guess I would classify it by saying anything east of the... Uh, the, uh, the, the uh, <coughs> estuary... Or, East of one A. Yeah, east of one A. Yeah. Well, well, well no, that, the, no I'm, saying, I'm saying I'm saying east of the east of the uh, the estuary, in west of one uh, uh, A. The problem you have because that's where all the drainage seems to be occurring. The problem you have isn't the drainage. The problem you have is that nobody has maintained the drainage facilities for hundreds of years. You can uh, take a look at Meadow Pond. Mm -hmm. Now, we had an employee who recently retired from Public Works who used to fish down there in his canoe, and you couldn't see the bottom of the pond. Right. Today, you can't get a canoe across it because the pond is full. The eutrophication, so, so the process of going back to a meadow, which is what it originally was, that's why it's called Meadow Pond, is in fact taking place. If you don't do something about that, you're going to continue to flood out other structures because you haven't maintained your own water control systems within the community. That they've been neglected mm -hmm. because the town doesn't appropriate the money for them. It's the way it is. It's a larger problem than the grist mill dam. It's a larger problem than the two other Warren articles <coughs> relative to flooding. I guess that's the point of my concern: is that are we are we addressing this as a as the larger issue? That's why you've got three other Warren articles on there for flooding yeah. to try to start but addressing it's kind those of a issues. Mill thing, and I'm wondering: right. is there not some sort of um, a grand plan in terms of how to deal? with our, with our uh, <coughs> uh, hydrology, essentially, right? Basically, you're stuck with what you got. The town in 1986 did a master drain plan. 
and the town in its wisdom decided to appropriate zero funds to implement any of that plan. That plan took care of some of these problems. And here we are in 2017, and we still haven't put one penny in the, 2080, uh, the 1986 faster drain plan. That, you just can't keep on doing that. Was, that's that, was that plan an engineering plan? Yes, it was. Okay. It was done by a professional engineering. And as soon as you've examined it, and it's still appropriate today? Oh, it's not appropriate today because you've developed so much of the town since 1986, <coughs> things have to be changed in it. Right. And I did ask a number of years ago to have the plan updated. The answer was no. Who did you I mean, ask? I asked the selectman, and I asked to put an article in the town meeting, and the answer was no. Nobody wanted it. Couldn't find any support for it anywhere. <coughs> well, you find support for it here, just so you know. If I, I can't think. get it in the warrant, it doesn't come here. I, I understand that. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, we really need to, a, a grander plan in terms of, you know, uh, instead of this piecemeal stuff, because I'm not sure that this piecemeal stuff is going to get us where we probably want to be. You can't afford a master plan that's not piecemeal. You've got a gentleman oh, no. sitting you're right down the phases. end down there. You're going to have phases in it, but at least those phases will be coordinated with each other. Well, that's why we have those warrant articles in this particular warrant, to start coordinating those phases and take care of some of these problems. Okay. And this is part of that process. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, sir. Okay, you finished, Tim? I am. Thank you. Sonny's had his hand up yeah, for I 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm looking at the, the budget here. It was $26.8 million, right? Through the end of November, you spent $23.5 million. What product, besides the grist mill, what, I see you already fixed the door, so we don't need a warrant article for that. What else wasn't completed besides the grist mill? There are lots of projects that are still in progress. <coughs> Yeah, that's what I'm trying to find out why. Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't sit here and go through yeah, $26 million dollars worth of appropriations like on the top of my mind. Surplus you can let me answer, Mr. Chairman? Do well, I have hold, an opportunity to answer? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sonny, we're talking about this grist mill war article right that. now. Okay, you're taking too much. You're going too big on this thing. Okay, do you have something more specific that has to do with this grist mill warrant article? Not the big, what? big, big picture of $26 it's million. It's not the big picture. You've got a surplus through the end of November of about $3 million. So what is your question, specifically? So the fish mill should, 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 I'm getting all this feedback. I can hear it. I know. I can hear it, Sonny. Go ahead. Please ask your question to me. Hmm? Ask me the question. What is your question that you have? I, I was trying to find out what other projects were. Okay. Because the budget was three million dollars in surplus at the end of okay. November. When okay. shortly, when Chris, Christy gets up, she's going to talk. There, the, some of the money that you're talking about, some of the things that we already put into the budget are coming back out because they've been paid for with 2017 money. Give and Christy's going to explain all that to you. Okay. Well but there isn't. That's this hundred thousand for this particular thing isn't going to come out of this year's. 2017 budget. Okay. I understand it. Okay. I mean, the voters voted to to do it, to fix okay. the grist mill. Um, mm -hmm. You have the flooding on High Street as it is. Yes. Okay. So. Okay. All right. I'll wait for Chris. You want to you, wait for her? And you okay. do have a warrant article to address the flooding on High Street. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank uh, goodness. Yeah, Maureen, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I'm very confused. How, if I may, how much money? has been spent thus far on this experience, roughly. Well, they said they have 535 left. They had 650 a lot, so it'd be 115. So it was 650 to start with. There's 500 and change left in there. Okay, now, <coughs> I, I guess I don't understand if it's in there why we have to put another 100 now. Because the bids came in requiring an additional $100,000 to build the work. To actually, so, so no actual work has been done yet on this dam. There has been work done. It's right. not the not the work of constructing a new dam, but it's the engineering for that. The yeah. engineering. So all the money spent, the hundred and change, was on engineering and permits and, and federal business. That's correct. correct. Yes. Okay, so five hundred thousand and change is left, and nothing has yet been done, but everything has been. Um, 
Well, I, is it ready to go? I guess that's my yes. question. This hundred thousand. The actual 000. fixing is ready to go. We actually have bids to do the work, which would be done this coming year if this hundred thousand dollars is appropriate, because we're a hundred thousand short of the money necessary to construct it for the number of, for the bids that we receive. And we had a fairly wide disbursement of bids. I think we had something like eight or nine bidders uh, to bid on this, and we're using the low bid, which was approved by the state. But in order to use the low bid, we're a hundred thousand short. Anybody else have a question about, uh, go ahead, Steve. I think uh, town manager actually explained it quite well. I mean, we've already spent this amount of money. We've already done all the work with the engineer and everything to get to this point. So to finalize this, and it's the will of the people to save the dam, that's what they voted for. So for $100,000, I certainly will vote in favor of it at this point. We've already put out that much money. We've already done all the work, so you know, we can't stop it. Okay, so just to, <laughs> be done. Just to make sure. Okay. <clears throat> Today, there is six hundred and fifty thousand dollars to fix the dam. Okay, one hundred and fifteen thousand of it, approximately, has been spent right. to make this now a shovel-ready project. They need one hundred. Yes, another hundred thousand will finish this project. Okay, so that once it's finished, of course, then of course we can maintain it every year. You see. And the uh, DPW can have one additional job to do now, which will be to go down there and, and slide boards in and out um, as the water goes up and goes down and depending on what they wish to do with it. So there is, it, so then, then we'll maintain this well into the future, probably long after we're gone. Uh, Mr. Jones? I think that, you know, legally speaking, um, the will of the people statement is accurate, but in terms of practically speaking, when 72% vote to decommission the dam and only 50.12% vote to repair the dam, I think the will of the people from a practical level is decommission the dam. Right. Fred, do you have any, any uh, sense of the cost of maintaining this dam just should this one off the pass and the work be completed as, as planned? Well, the maintenance of the dam is fairly low in the first 20 or 30 years, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, you're right, it may be that we put boards in and out depending on what the water level needs to be maintained to, and the state will make that decision on, on how that is done mm -hmm. and when it is done. Uh, the biggest problem that we have, and one of the reasons we want the dam, is simply because when we have major storm events, we need to be able to have facilities to hold the water so we don't impact everything downstream. We need to be able to release it gradually, and, and that's going to be the big task. That means that instead of going up now with a backhoe and pulling rocks out of the wall in order to let more water out, we'll have a control device to do that, which is going to take one or two employees to do a matter of a few minutes, as opposed to sending up as we did in, in 2007 at the major storm we had there, the Mother's Day storm, we ended up sending up a, a, a several trucks, several employees, and a backhoe and started digging holes in the dam in order to release the water. Mm -hmm. That's just not going to happen because we'll have control devices there to do it. So you're saying that the, um, the activity that will occur in the dam is not so much maintenance as it is water management. In the first years of the dam, that's correct. Okay. The big function of the dam is water management anyhow. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to control the water levels downstream from there and not not impact the flood uh, situation, particularly on High Street. And the real, the real issue here for me, uh, you know, I supported strongly the decommissioning, 70 percent, 70 percent of the voters agree with me back in the day. And I was strongly opposed to repairing it uh, when, when it came up, and unfortunately, Six voters didn't show up because of the weather, and, and it passed, and now we're down this road of, of uh, having to repair it. And uh, I don't recall the, the issue back in 2014 of, if we, of decommissioning. I thought you were in favor of decommissioning in 2014. Uh, I don't recall any discussion. I could be wrong. My memory is fading because I'm in age, I guess. But I don't recall any discussion about 
Well, if we remove the dam, then the, wa the water is going to flood some other home or something like that. I don't recall that. Um, you have a facility there now that you've neglected. Yeah. It has a fairly large pond behind it. If you looked at the decommissioning work that needed to be done, mm -hmm. there was something in the order of 130,000 cubic yards of silt that had to be taken out of there and maintained out of there on a regular basis mm -hmm. as long as the dam wasn't there. There's many hundreds of thousands and additional cubic feet of, of sludge up behind that dam that after you take the dam down is on a regular basis going to have to be removed. Mm -hmm. If you don't, what you're going to do is you're going to blow out the culvert on High Street and you're going to High Street's going to disappear for all intents and purposes. If you saw the, the, uh, uh, the damage uh, over in uh, Alton to the dam that was blown out over there, You'd understand what happens to the material behind a dam that's been there for hundreds of years. Yeah. Over a period of time, that material is going to gradually be released by the water flow. It's going to go down through the meadow pond. It's going to go out into the marsh. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a long time to do that. We're going to have to help it and manage it. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not necessarily our property upon which this junk That's exists. not necessarily so. Right. I use the word necessarily. I understand. Not necessarily. We, we have a surveyor in town who has done a lot of research on this and says, in fact, that pond is ours and that land is ours. We haven't been able to confirm that. Okay. But that's that's a lot of work's been done towards that goal to find out who actually owns that land. It's immaterial because what we're doing here is we're controlling floods, and that's the primary function behind building a dam. As far as not opposing. Or not being, or being in favor, or not being in favor of either building the dam or removing the dam, not my function. My function is to do what the town meeting votes for us to do, whether I, it's by I one vote that. or five hundred thousand. I, I appreciate that. I'm just uh, pointing out that the, I don't recall in 2014 when the decommissioning warrant got, was put on the ballot and the voters voted 70 percent to decommission. I don't recall anyone making the argument that it would cause the decommissioning would cause flooding of existing properties. I don't recall that at all. You know why? Because um, I can tell you why. Okay. After they did the engineering study and somebody came in and, and told us that we had to remove 13,000 cubic yards of silt from behind the dam in order to decommission it, and there would be more silt that would come after that because they're just going to do a trench right up through the entire thing. They said, well, all that, that uh, silt that's, that's waterlogged once we put the trench in there, that's not going to move the, the material off to the side. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the smartest bulb in the, or the brightest bulb in the package, but I know darn right well that that material is going to move, and I've seen it move in other situations. We would be removing that forever until we remove the entire silt bed on that entire pond all the way back up to North Shore Road. Mm -hmm. so and and that would be, you're talking now hundreds and hundreds, of that, maybe millions of dollars in order to get it out, the, out of there and, and get rid of it, as opposed to try to en encapsulate it and try to control it. If we remove the dam, uh, there will be a stream flowing in, in, in through where the dam is now? Is that? That's correct. Okay. And yep. that stream is what's going to be carrying the, the junk out over time, is what you're talking about, right? That's right. right. And you're going to remove it all one way or the other. Yeah, and what you're saying is the reason why it wasn't raised in 2014 while it's flooding out of homes. We didn't have the engineering study to show what needed to be removed. didn't know about all the junk down there. Well, basically. We, we did not know how much material was there or what needed to be done from an engineering standpoint. Right. We do now. Okay. You uh, thank you, Fred. Okay. okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Back when we had the Mother's Day storm, what year was that? 2007. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, correct. Days after I arrived here. There you go. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to town. Now, just, welcome home. just at the time, at the time I was living in Hampton. I'm, I'm trying to remember back. I do remember that flood very well. A lot of things happened. Am I correct in saying that there was a possibility of that gristmill dam breaching? Because at the time in 2006 there was a sluice. And so the town of Hampton went up there with payloaders or whatever, backhoes, and removed the sluice, or most of it. 
We removed a lot of the rock formation that was there behind Which? the uh, old okay. grist mill to, in fact, prohibit it from breaching. Right. Now, since that time, since 2006, it has remained just as it is, right? You haven't done any other? No, that's not true. Okay, good. The Explain. state ordered us to remove quite a bit of the material that was there that was <coughs> pounding water behind the dam, okay. okay? So that dam level has been lowered substantially Even from more. what it was in 2007. Okay, so you've taken more away. And let's say that in 2014 when they had the first, when the state was saying to everybody in, in the state of New Hampshire, remove the dams, um, recommending it. Um, at that point, has anything you haven't worked on it since have you only what the states ordered us to do okay because it's under I, state supervision okay because at that point during that following year when it was marketed to heavily to recreate the dam I went up there and looked at it and um, and I saw there is some water behind it still yes there is there may be I, I'm gonna say two or three feet and then I drove around where um, Norm, the uh, fire, fire chief from Kingston, where he has his place, drove up around in the back there. And what I observed was basically a meadow. It was really no longer a pond. It was mostly a meadow because it's, it's so filled in and everything is growing. It's going back to nature. Things are growing. As a matter of fact, just for the record, the, the berm itself, where the grist mill is, um, it became like a sieve because trees were growing on the berm and so when they c cut the trees down then the roots died but the roots had had created holes where the water could now follow and so the, the dam itself behind that and around the grist mill um, it was it was leaking all over the place and if I remember correctly when Norm and Candace were in here years ago Norm explained that um, the, the possible uh, fix for it would be to line the inside of it with clay and then create the um, put the uh, the actual structure back in to hold back the water but in order to fill those holes and, and keep it from being a sieve would be to line it with so many inches of clay is that you have to take the old stumps out first before you can do that okay and then you have to repack the dam it's 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 called uh, channeling uh, with, with the root systems that are in there. That's why we cut all the trees down. That was one of the first things I wanted them to do was cut the trees out of there right. because I'd maintained several dams before. Now, as far <coughs> as, as uh, the inside of the dam itself is concerned, uh, we're going to line that. We're going to use concrete. We're going to use uh, proper building materials as specified by the state and the Army Corps of Engineers to make that area solid so it will stop leaking. Right now, that's a relief valve. And those old dams were built to leak. They weren't built to cold water. They were built to, 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 to allow it to weep. That's just the way they were constructed. Of course, in the old day, when that dam was built, there was a large and deep pool of water behind it. There was no, no sediment in there. What you're seeing when you, when you look at the backside of that, that uh, pond up off of North Shore Road, for instance, and you see grass and weeds and so on, the dam is the... the, the pond itself is filling with material which is called the process of a eutrophication right. and that process is in fact to make a new meadow right when you do that the minute you do that and that in fact takes hold and you have no more storage capacity uh, you've lost the use of the dam that's one of the reasons why you have to properly build the dam and have to properly build the sluice ways and you have to you have to calculate the the amount of water running through and the water coming down from upstream you know, when you, when you look at the area of influence that that dam controls, it starts right up here behind the town hall. It runs all the way up into Northampton, into what was called the Black Marsh, or the Black Forest. That whole area uh, from Mill Road over to, through Northampton all the way over to the end of um, White's Lane drains down through this one little dam. That's a huge amount of water. Yes, I know. That, that whole area is a, is a uh, aquifer. It is. And it's just, I lived on Mill Road for a while, I know that yeah, everybody's got problems in this. A lot of water. Well, too much water sometimes. Yep. 
The, um, We've controlled some of that with the uh, Aquarian, who are now keeping the brooks and their properties open right. so the water doesn't pile up. Right. Now, as it stands since, let's say, 2014, it's just there's a partial dam there, and then the water's just oh, it's flowing through, basically. <coughs> the, state, the state and the Army Corps calculated uh, how high the, uh, the sluiceway that had been removed, partially removed, could be in order to maintain a certain and safe level of the dam, even with a major rainstorm, so that the dam would not breach and it would not fail. And, and what they're telling us to do now is we need to construct it properly to ensure that will not happen in the future. And they've approved the plans that, in fact, the engineers have devised. Right. And years ago, they actually, um, there was a choice of either you do this or you're going to be fined per day if you don't. Yeah, they, do they, something. They, they, now, they have a pretty pretty substantial fine structure, right. yes. Now, basically, we, uh, when I say we haven't done anything, that's not completely true because we true. have, yeah. because we've, we've basically got been planning. So the state is saying, okay, as long as you're still planning and doing moving forward with this, we're not going to fine you per day. Well, it's more than that because the state inspects it on a regular basis. We inspect it with the state on a regular basis, and we make sure that whatever recommendations they or the Army Corps of Engineers make for work behind the dam is, in fact, carried out immediately. Mm -hmm. So we have been doing maintenance work on the pond itself at the back of the dam to make sure there is no problem with flooding or failures or anything else. Okay. I don't have any other questions, Fred. Thank you. It's, it's knowledge is a wonderful thing. Go ahead, uh, Sonny. You have your yeah. hand up again. I had a couple of questions. This is just a Warren article, so it's gonna the voters are gonna decide anyway. Right. Where's the silt coming from? The silt is a natural function of the. the uh, if I remember, you've got all these weeds there. I forget the name of them, but you know. If you look at the entire area that drains to that area, that silt is traveling all the way from the back of this town hall, all the way up to that pond. Yeah, because I mean uh, the few houses that are but the dam now are having flooding problems. I remember. Well, we haven't had any reports of flooding problems, but uh, yeah. The, the problem is that siltation is a, is a problem in itself. Yeah, I just and, couldn't and we, understand where the silt was coming from. It's coming from the entire drainage area. Yeah, because it'll go through the culvert into the marsh, and, right. you know, yeah. High Street backs up anyway where those condos are. Well, and, and it backs up because uh, Meadow Pond, which is oh, fed I, by this I particular really facility, yeah. has, has increased in, 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 in depth. I mean, Meadow Pond was created in the 1700s by a giant fissure that opened on the Atlantic coast and all salt water fled down in there and the, the ocean sealed the fissure again mm -hmm. and that water stayed in there. Yeah. And, and this, that's where this water all drains to. All right. Well, it's the Warren article, so the voters will decide what they want to do. That's correct, Sonny. And the, and the point is that what all we're doing tonight is we're going to decide whether we want to recommend or not recommend. Right. But the voters, the legislative body, will make the decision. That's quite true. true. So hold on, David. Brian, you were, had your hand up. Um, just a comment. Uh, Mike was around at that, this time or whatever. We have spent months, literally months, going over this. And this is at least the second or third time that we've seen this. Right, third time. And, okay. And, I mean, we had meetings that were postponed because we couldn't make a decision. Um, this is nothing new, and nothing that's been said here isn't true. I mean, it hasn't been said before. It hasn't right. been said before. Right. So I just wanted to. You're state absolutely that. right. And very shortly, we're going to take a vote and see what happens. But we still have a few more people that have something to. Uh, David, you had your hand up next, please. Give you a little background of your talk. <clears throat> when I was first hearing it tonight, because I haven't known much about the dam, mm -hmm. it sounded like. Gee, we were supposed to get it done. We should have torn it down when we should have had one more vote. And we should have done it. 
But as you were talking, and you got more into it, doing it in today's world, which is three years later, um, it sounds like if we did take the dam down, we'd have more dam problems than we they would envision because the silt and everything keeps coming might overpower. And rather than a hundred thousand dollars, it might be two. Make it up a number. Could be two million dollars. So based upon that, I would interpret that your recommendation would be let's fix the dam. You may not officially have to say that, but that's my interpretation of what I'm hearing. The question I have is, it also would appear, therefore, if they had fixed the dam and made it proper in 2014, we'd now be having the problems earlier than if we fixed it now, because all the things you said were gonna, are gonna happen now if we do build it would have already been starting to occur. It would have been a bigger mess if we had built the dam. Is that your interpretation? No, I don't believe so. Help uh, me with that, please. What, what, what happens here is that once the, the, the dam is constructed and the water levels are built up to where the maintenance requirement is right. to hold the water, uh, silt will file th slowly file through the, the, the devices and leave the pond. So your siltation levels are going to stay about the same. They, they can't come up any higher than the, the, uh, the base of the control we gonna, devices. We were going to take it down in 14, correct? We are going to take it down, plus you were going to take all that silt out. A lot of it. Right. 13,000 cubic yards is a lot of material when it's wet. Right. Um, that won't happen. It's not going to happen. You're just, all that you're doing now is you're controlling water. That silt's going to stay where it is. It's not going to move. It may move a little bit, but it's not, the, the bulk of it is not going to move. It's going to stay there. The bed of that pond is going to stay where it is until the town makes a decision to go in and clean it out for some reason. I have no idea what that would be. But it'll the idea here is to control the water and make sure that we can control water and control the flooding that may come from the water. Well, if we had taken the dam down in 2014, we would not be able to control the water in 15, 16, and 17. Is that true? That is true. And we would have had where we are today still trying to make a decision. We're trying to make one now. Right. But if we had done it then, what I'm hearing the $2 million, the stuff that could come down in the future over the next 10, 20 years, would have happened in 2014. If you took the dam down, down, down completely. Would have the same problem which you're just, we're discussing now. You would know. You would have all that silt down there at one time. Right. And we would have, we possibly could have created a very larger problem than we were trying to solve. You, you already have fa failing capacity in Meadow Pond, which is the receiving waters. Yeah. You would have had thousands of cubic yards of material, com of solid materials coming down through there. It would have blown out the culverts and the, and the roadway on High Street. So it's a good thing we didn't do it back then, is what I'm hearing. Uh, yeah, and when we looked at, when I looked at the final engineering plans, and I saw that just to do the minimum work, you're removing 13,000 cubic yards of silt. Can you imagine all that coming down that hill onto High Street and the effect? It would be dramatic, I know, um, but it would be there. And that's one of the problems you'd have to have to contend with. And, and you know, when you, when you look at the base of the pond, which could be here, and you look at it, and the silt is up here, and you cut a channel right down the middle, where's all this material going to go? It's going to fluff in. Right. Okay, they told me that, that material will never slump in. It will stay right there, solid as a brick. It's all water soaked. It's going gonna, it's gonna to slump in. It's going to go right down. <coughs> and it would have done that. Yes, it's it would have. in the process right now. Right. Thank we, you. We'd be a real mess at this point. A real mess. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tim, did so you are we going to vote on this? Yes, yeah. I do. Are you calling for a vote? <laughs> I yeah. call for a vote. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I have a couple of questions. Um, the capacity, Fred, on the uh, <coughs> metal pond, uh, how will that be affected by this work? Will it increase or decrease or remain the same? The capacity of Meadow Pond, oh. Meadow Pond will continue to eutrophicate until something does. I mean, if this passes. And if this passes, done. it's not going to do any worse than what's already there at Meadow Pond. So the capacity is going to be unchanged. The capacity will be unchanged. Okay. And in a few years, Meadow Pond will become a bigger problem simply because it's connected to the, to the marsh, to the ocean. Right. And you will need to control the entranceway at, at Winniconnet Road to stop all that water from coming up in there at inappropriate times. You may even have to dredge Meadow Pond at some point. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's, uh, that's future stuff. Um, yeah, what kind of future are we talking about? Well, I don't know. That's why we, we put the articles in for study of that entire area for uh, uh, the highway, 
uh -huh. and, Kings Highway. And, and those side streets up at the end of and High Street. Uh, we need to know what's going on out there. We need to do the necessary <coughs> tests. We need to find out what's actually occurring. So since you would anticipate more work going to be done after this is completed, is what I'm hearing, right? You're, you're, because you have neglected the drainage system in this town for 300 years, I mean, if you didn't change the oil in your car for 300 years, what would you have? Well, That's basically what we're looking at here. You haven't maintained... I, I'm not disputing capacity. what you're saying at all. I just want to confirm that... It's going to be a problem. There's going to be more work needed after we get done completing this work. Um, yes, sir, there capacity is. Capacity isn't going to change. So our ability to do water control is going to be pretty much unchanged as well because that's related uh, to capacity, right? So from the dam and above that we're talking about here, our ability to control water will be increased. Below that, because we're talking about the Atlantic Ocean, right. it's going to be decreased. And the perimeter of the uh, mill pond is going to be the same, I assume, as well, right? I would assume that as well, so and, and we already change. have uh, all the land that's behind the dam uh, being donated to the town. So when the chairman referred to two feet of water, it's going to remain two feet of water, basically, right? No, it'll be more once you put the dam in. Once you put the dam in. That will increase the capacity if it's more than two feet. Oh, well, yeah. you're going to have a base, yeah. and you're going to put the dam in, and the dam is going to have storage capacity behind it. So depending on what you do with that storage capacity, how many boards you put into it will depend on how high the water level gets behind it. And that's where you get your flood storage from. So we, we will be increasing capacity with this work then? Eventually, yes, because we're going to prevent flooding with it. It's going to control the, control the surge and, of water. And if, and if we remove the silt, we'd increase the capacity even more, right? If we yes, you would. Yeah, considerably. Yeah. yeah. You might actually be able to... Uh, one of the suggestions that was given to me, and, and I, I know this was done in another town, uh, was to remove the silt, to dry it, and sell it. Right. Because there's no contamination of that silt. There's no upstream orchards there, so there's no, there's no, con no contamination in the silt at all. So it's, it's worth its weight in gold, basically. So do you have a sense of what the cost of removal of the silt would be if we, we added that to the want to venture a guess. Well, you gotta have you gotta have a place to put it to dry it, and then you can move it away. But yeah, you, it'd be quite an involved process. Well, we're gonna have to do it eventually. You were, you were saying, right? Maybe, probably. If you maintain the dam correctly, the silt level won't come any higher. Well, if it's moving water, it'll go someplace else. Moving water always has silt, right? So yes, I understand that, but you won't be accumulating more silt behind the dam mm -hmm. if you maintain it properly. You know, Mr. Chairman, I've, I have opposed this work in the past. I've never heard the water control argument being put forth. It's always been a beautification thing or, or a historic thing, which didn't get anywhere with my, my thinking. Um, you're talking about water control is, is the real motivation here, and, and my inclination is, oddly enough, to flip and, and decide to support this uh, for a variety of reasons primarily because the principle uh, of um, controlling our water uh, flow is, uh, is being put forth as to what we're trying to achieve here, not some beautification exercise like we have heard in the past. So uh, on that basis, Fred, uh, if this is the right thing to do for our immediate water control needs, um, that's great. I would like to see a larger hydrology plan for all of the area I specified earlier. I'm sure this would be part of that work anyway. It will be eventually, yes. But yeah, I, it's I'd a like piece at a time. I'd like, to, I'd like the voters to have a sense of the enormity of what we're dealing with over time, whatever that time may be. Um, and and that's, that's the point I was making earlier. But I'm inclined to support this reluctantly, but okay. behind the principle, we've we got to have better water control. Okay. We have somebody asking for the vote. Okay. You, re you asked for the vote? We did ask for the okay, we're going to vote now. Okay, those in favor of this, those in favor of this, please raise your hand. Okay, I have. Okay, I have Sunny, I have Danielle, <coughs> I have um, Maureen, Stephen Lebranch, uh, Mr. Plouffe, Mr. Henderson, Mr. Jones, and David Moyer. And those opposed would be Brian, and those abstaining would be Regina Barnes. 
Thank you, Fred, for being so informative on this topic. Well, it will look pretty too when we're finished with it. I don't care about pretty. I care about <laughs> I care about the health of the town. So I, it'll help the health. Pretty is nice. But it won't look that, ugly either. Pretty is a nice side effect. The health of the town is what counts. Okay. Okay. Hold on now, Barbara. Who made the original motion to move this? Mr. Mora. And it was seconded by Mr. Lapham. Okay. Thank you very much. Regina was only asking for a vote. Okay. okay, she wasn't making a motion. So, all right. Thank you very much. So we've we certainly have talked about that again, thoroughly. So we have another. The next Warren article. Um, I will read it. A fairly small one. Mace Road sidewalk. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of five hundred twenty thousand dollars for the construction of? An Americans with Disability Act compliant six foot sidewalk on the west side of Maced Road, including installation of ADA compliant ramps and crosswalks connecting Mill Road to High Street, recommended by the Board of Selectmen 300. And let me see, fiscal impact note the estimated 2018 town impact of $520,000 is 0 0.156. Per thousand valuation. Okay, do I have a motion on this to um, recommend? What? To recommend? Or I not? Or not recommend? I'll second it. Okay, so David has made a motion and it was seconded by Regina. Um, does anybody have any any questions or comment? Go ahead, t Tim Jones. You know, in the, in the past, I've spoken with DPW about sidewalks and and. Uh, Ask for a, a, a sense of a grand plan of how we're going to uh, repair and make compliant, ADA compliant, all of our sidewalks. And I believe the number she guesstimated at was about $6 million. I thought it was more Last like $25 million, but um, let's, let's go with six. And also to have something, I think, you know, if we're going to build more sidewalks, and I'm not opposed to doing that, I think it needs to be in that grander plan. Not again a piecemeal uh, exercise here for a particular uh, neighborhood whose need is no no greater than another neighborhood's need in my mind, um, and so I cannot favor this because 500 over half a million dollars for a sidewalk uh, without any any uh, sense of how it fits into a grander sidewalk plan uh, doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm okay, not going to support this. Fred, I want to ask you a question, sir. We had. In the budget, twenty six hundred uh, twenty six thousand, I believe it yeah. was. Yes. In the regular budget, right. DPW budget, right. both Jennifer and Chris, that's <clears throat> money to be used to fix here and there as things need to be fixed, right. brought into ADA uh, compliancy. Then we had a separate Warren article brought forth by the DPW director and his deputy to do a sidewalk on, was it landing? Not land. Landing Road? Landing Road. Yeah. Landing Road. Okay. How much was that one for? $25,000. $25,000. I think it was twenty five. dollars okay. 50 50 I think so. 50000 Okay. So no, that was repair. That was repair. Repair. Yeah. $50,000. Right. $50, now, the question I want to ask on this particular $520,000, first of all, it, was, it talks about having a six-foot sidewalk. Is that coming out of the street or is it coming out of... Uh, eminent domain taking property off of people on the it's west. It's not coming out of the street. Okay. So, and the next thing I, so then there's, this is a little more complicated, I think, than a, to bring this in at the 11th hour. Um, another question for you would be, so, so it's not coming out of the street, and I happen to, I realize that when you're driving that particular stretch of road, that's not an excessively wide road, so you can't be taking six feet of it and making it into a sidewalk. Because then we'd have to make the street one way. Um, so Basically. It, yeah, so then we're going to have to, I guess, take by eminent domain all the way from Mill Road all the way to High Street, which in that alone sounds like a pretty big project. Now, has this been fully engineered? That Matter of fact, the Public Works Department conducted a study of this at the request of the residents on that street, and I have it in front of me, and I don't see anything in here about eminent domain. It's probably a 50-foot layout, but the, you're right. The street is only two lanes, so it's probably a 25-foot roadway, and I suspect that the roadway is kicked to one side as opposed to the other. Uh, they did a survey of the entire roadway, and um, they have all the, all, all the materials, all the walls, all the uh, 
the trees, uh, all the catch basins that, that are there, they've determined all that, the potential crosswalks. Um, their analysis was that um, ADA compliant six foot wide by two minute sidewalk, which is the new standard, by the way, federal standard is six feet, was $341,000. The vertical granite curbing, uh, 3,100 feet of that at $35 a, a per linear foot was $108,500. Um, catch basin adjustments and locations is $6,000. Tree removal is $4,500. And five seg segmental block retaining walls is $60,000. A total is $520,000 okay. to build the walkway. Okay, thank you very much. Now, I do want to mention one more thing, and I'm going to go kind of along with what uh, Mr. Jones said, and that is that the DPW director and his deputy have a bigger picture, a sort of a master plan, capital improvement. They have a plan where they're doing this, that, and the next thing. This is just something that um, they weren't planning to do, but the neighborhood asked. And I appreciate the neighborhood asking, but as Tim pointed out, um, everybody probably would like a sidewalk. I'm sure that, um, you know, the same argument could be made for almost every road um, that presently doesn't have a sidewalk. I'm thinking myself about Mill Road, where I used to live at one time. There's no sidewalk from uh, Ann's, that four Ann's corner Lane. thing, Ann's Lane, Ann's to all the way to... Uh, Road. Yeah, there's Someone no sidewalk. Someone working on a petition for that now for next year. Well, that's that's all well and good, and, and everybody can keep petitioning more and more, and and, and Tim, you mentioned the figure six million. It's, I seem to remember it was twenty-five million, but yeah. it was a it was a huge amount. Um, and that was just to repair existing sidewalks. Right. Yeah. It can't. We can't do everything at once. So I have to go with the professionals that I that we're paying that we hired, and that is the DPW director and his deputy. I have to go with what they recommend. If they had come to me with this Warren article, then I would consider it in a whole different light. But I'm, having said that, does anybody else have anything to say about this petition? Warren article. David. I totally agree with what you're saying and Tim said in the aspect that we need a grand plan. We not only need a grand plan for sidewalks, there's other things coming down the line that we need to coordinate. We're coordinating the water flow. I think it's a great idea to coordinate this together in one overall plan in doing the town properly in the with regard in the DPW, I believe has the right people to do that. I'm just agreeing with that statement because I really believe in it in planning it out properly. Thank you, David. Regina, you wanted to say something? I just wanted to say yes, and the petitioners of this Warren article are aware. Um, they're front and pen that there's a lot on the ballot this year and this and I've explained to them that you know this can't all happen at one time but the fact that it's to go on the ballot this year whether or not it gets approved to me is not really the issue that we're dealing with right now the issue that we're dealing with right now is that we have people that are in their 30s and 40s that have kids that feel unsafe their kids to go to school to go to a playground. And yeah, it's not just on Mace Road, it's all over town. So we really need to start putting together plans and plans don't just consist of, you know, how to do it and what to do it. It also consists of putting money aside to actually get the projects done because we got sidewalks, we got people's houses getting flooded with frozen salty seawater. No one comes and helps us bail us out ever. So it's up to us to help and to help everyone that lives in this town. And I understand all your points and where you're coming from exactly, and I explained that to the petitioners. But I said, you know what? Put it on, the, put it on there. Petition it. Because we've got to start getting in people's minds what needs to be done. All right. So having, that's all I'd like to having say. Having said that, um, should we now take a vote, Tim? Mm -hmm. uh, one statement and a question, if I might. Fred, did I hear you say that the uh, ADA is now requiring six foot or that's recommended six foot? The, I understand the ADA requirements have been increased to six feet. That has serious implications for our sidewalk costs all over the place. For everybody's sidewalk costs. Because we've been, we've been repairing sidewalks with the intent of making ADA compliant. I don't think we have a sidewalk at six feet. Well, if it's, if it's an existing sidewalk, 
it can remain at its current width okay. as long as the intersections of the sidewalk have the ADA requirements in them. As of what the date? The new sidewalk is going to have to meet the new requirements of ADA. As of what date? I, they didn't give me a date, but it's, it's been within the last year they've changed the requirements. So if we built one two years ago, we're, we're, we're safe. No safe. problem. We built one if last we're, year. If we're, we're safe. rehabilitating a sidewalk, we right. don't. We it, it, we can keep it the same. If way. We're building one this year. If it's a brand new one, we're going to have to comply with the requirements. Six foot. Right. That is amazing. All right. Let's do so about my, my statement Whoops. is my statement is uh, simply this that uh, I think that sidewalks are a great thing. We should have them probably in a whole lot of places. I agree with you, Regina. Um, the fact that this is on the warrant is not a problem with me. Uh, it's our job to recommend to the voters whether they should approve it or not, which is what we're going to take a vote on right now. But uh, I think that it's a big question in my mind whether this particular sidewalk is the number one sidewalk we should do first. All right. Now, all those in favor, raise your hand, please. All those in favor of recommending this, please raise your hand. All those opposed to this particular warrant article, please raise your hand. I have um, Brian and Sonny, and I have Danielle and Maureen, Steve LaBranch, Mike Pluff, Steve Henderson, Tim Jones, and David Moyer. Those uh, abstaining would be Regina. Thank you very much. Moving right along to the next... Warren <coughs> on uh, cemetery tree removal on petition of Mary Mary Ray Preston and at least 25 registered voters shall the town of Hampton raise and appropriate the sum of fifty thousand dollars to remove and or trim dead or dying trees in the Hampton cemeteries for health safety and aesthetic purposes recommended by the Board of Selectmen 003 impact fish fiscal note the estimated 2018 tax impact on fifty thousand dollars is zero point one five per thousand valuation now i do want to mention perhaps some of you watched the selectmen's meeting last night um, there was a warren article two years ago to do this very thing and it passed except there's a little bit of a difference and the difference was that the money was going to come out of the cemetery money okay now they didn't do it there was no reason given last night as to why they didn't they chose not to do it even though they got the approval to do it but now they're coming back and this is the same warrant article except now instead of coming out of the cemetery funds the money shall come out of the taxpayers and if I remember correctly last night, they decided at the time not to vote on it, or did they vote? They, they did not vote. They voted tonight after re re reviewing their new submitted warrant article. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so there was some silence on it and reluctance, and <coughs> you can see how the selectmen have voted on that. And I have to say that having watched that, I probably was going to be heavily influenced by the... Um, the selectman's decision. So, any other discussion, Tim? So, um, the vote of 003 is accurate? Yes, right. sir, it is. Okay. Yep. Um, is there some reason that the Secretary's Trust Fund is not being used that you're aware of? I think it was just because it was drawn without that clause in there. Uh, I'm not sure the person who drew it knew how to do that wording. Okay. I wasn't approached on how to do it because I would have recommended that. Right. They have about six hundred thousand dollars in the trust fund, right. so there's more than enough money to do that. Right. Is there some? But it can't be removed now because this is a bit one petition warrant article, and two, you're now going to change the source of revenues, and right. you can't do that in an amendment. Um, because we're past the date, and this was submitted at the last minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If this, if this was not submitted at the last minute, well, somebody could do it before midnight, but the warrant article will still stay. Right. It can't be amended that way. Right. The petition is. Uh, the question is now. I guess I mean, can it be amended uh, at delivery session? Not okay. to use cemetery funds. Uh, right. So this is just take it or leave it. Period. I mean, we didn't, we got no room at all because it's a last minute thing. We didn't have a chance. No one had a chance to really vet it. Right. Like you yourself, for example. Yeah. Right. I mean, I would have supported this if they they get six hundred thousand dollars in the cemetery trust fund. 
<laughs> that's what they were pointing we out. We've got to stop night. with this last minute money warrant articles because people need an opportunity to vet this stuff. That's what the selectmen pointed out last night. Having, so having you know, I have that, to say no on this. Having said that, those in favor of this, um, to recommend this, oh, yes, Barbara. Do we have a motion? Do we have a motion on this, please? Uh, we, David the made the motion Second. and was seconded by Mike Plouffe, if I remember correctly. Okay, so those in favor of this uh, to recommend, please raise your hands. Those opposed to this, please raise your hands. I have Brian and Sonny and Danielle and Maureen. Money be used for this? And Steve LeBranch and Mike Plouffe and Steve Henderson no, the budget, and, the budget and Tim Jones and David. Could we? And those uh, abstaining would be Regina Barnes. Thank you very reasons. much. You know, an emergency situation, would you be able to take down these trees? Uh, In an emergency, we would have to. There's okay. no question about it. All right. if, if these are very mature trees. Some of them are over 100 feet tall. Right. In some places, and if, if there so were, uh, you know, a failure in some of the trees, we would have to go take care of it. So if it became a danger, you'd be able to act of immediately. Course. And of so, course. all right, we're not creating a, 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 a dangerous situation. We're not. Would ask. Okay. Just no question all right. about it. Just wanted to get that that's, clear. That's Thank what you. the governing body does. Okay. The next one is One Sky Communication Services. We, oh, I'm sorry, One Sky. What did I say? Communication. Once One Sky Community Services, we, the undersigned residents of Hampton, petition the town of Hampton to place on the warrant the request to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the amount of $7,000 to support One Sky Community Services in their efforts to provide vital support and services to those individuals with developmental and intellectual disabilities who reside in the town of Hampton in the town's 2018 budget. Fiscal impact. Uh, the oh, I'm sorry. Recommended by the board of selectmen two zero one. The estimated 2018 town uh, tax impact on seven thousand dollars is zero point zero zero two per thousand valuation. Do I have a motion by Sonny David? Motion. A motion by David and seconded by second. Sunny. No, Sunny wanted a second that one. Thank you very much. Any discussion on this to recommend? Go ahead, Mr. Jones. Right. We put if this one article passes, it will become a, another line item. In if a, they submit the following year, right. they currently serve 70 residents in the town of Hampton. 70? 70. 70. Uh -huh. Okay. Is this is a that, brand new? Is this yes, a brand new? It's brand new. Is this, a, is this 70 a developmental or intellectual? Uh, they didn't break they it didn't down. Classify it's, 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 it's spread between the two. Uh -huh. Could be all of one or all of the other, basically. Or it could well, be 50 yeah. 50. Uh, yeah. No idea. Okay. Go ahead, David. You may have already just discussed this, but my Sir. question is early we have, if we voted for, we have about 25 charities. Right. This will be added to that list. Is that what you said? If the it next passes year? town meeting and if they ask the following year for yes. appropriation, it would be added to that list. Right. Right. Thank you. So you have, okay, hold on, Sonny. So you've got. Yeah, 70 uh, people that are, no, no, hold on just a minute. You've got 70 uh, people, $7,000, so you're spending, uh, what, $100 each? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not a lot of money. But whatever the case, I just wanted to make that comment. Go ahead, Sonny, please. Uh, to, with the proposal, did they say how many disabled children are serving in Hampton? 70. 70? 70. 70. Okay. Yeah. Not just children, though, right? No, yeah. Thank well, you. Yeah. Brent? Not just children. Right? They're serving se 70 individuals. Right. I can't tell you what their ages are. Right. You know okay. what they do? Services of? No, I'm not familiar with the company. This is their first foray into into Hampton, as Thank far you. as I, at, at least into the town. Thank it, you. It's, it's some sort of a nonprofit, correct? It is a nonprofit organization. Yeah. Okay. It's a 501c3. This one article just came in like yesterday, kind of thing? Yes, it came in today. How long have they been serving the town? I can't answer that question. Yeah. This is this is this like you know all of a sudden there's this nebulous part of this thing. It's we don't like this last minute stuff. It, well, it's it, terrible. This, this you know it's very it's like where did this come from all of a sudden? Obviously, if they've been serving people in town for a couple of years, it seems like we'd know them, but they're br sort of brand new and they already have 70 people lined up. Go ahead, Sonny. No, they're not brand new, but what? No. Well, Are you familiar their CEO with them? Is Chris Martin. Yeah. Chris oh, Martin's well, there you go. 
<laughs> well, that, that adds, please, explain that. Perhaps you know this organization. Give me a break. I know he's a Democratic, he's the head of well, Democratic Abraham something or other. Right. They hired him to be a CEO. And if they're serving 70 individuals from Hampton, it's, there's no reason not to approve it. Okay, okay, but you you just gave us a little more information that yeah, well, that's at least really you know that that gives us a lot more information. You, Tim, yes. Fred, have you been able to validate what we're actually that they're actually serving seven individuals? That's my understanding. I can't I, I personally. Yeah. No, I haven't talked to anybody. They did put that in writing. We do have it officially. But you haven't had time to vet any of this information, right? I just, just received it this afternoon. To you. Yeah. And given, I'll give, make a comment, can I? I think it's valid. I'll right? yield to you. And, and I'll <laughs> no, 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 never mind. No, no, wait, wait, wait. wait. It, so. Never okay. mind yielding. No, let just, me yield, No, please. no, no, finish. You finish, and then I will recognize Regina. Okay? That way we know who's running the meeting. Make a motion so that I can yield? <laughs> finish up, Tim, and then I'll recognize the next speaker. So that way I will remain in control of... Order. And that okay. must be. You have control. Okay, it is. May I suggest in your wise control of everyone here yes. that you grant Regina an opportunity to speak. Are you finished speak. speaking? I may have something to say after she speaks. That's different. You will have that opportunity, but you have to give up the floor first. Oh. Regina, please, go ahead. Chris Munns did come in. When did they come into the... That was a while ago. Uh, he came in time? several months ago. Yeah, I mean, I barely... Yeah. yeah. I could yeah. barely, they've I'd been they've been working at uh, trying to build this organization and, 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 and increase its size and serve more people uh, over a period of time. And sometime earlier last year, he came in and sat with the board and explained to them what they were doing. So this is an established organization. <coughs> he is the CEO of it. Uh, they are serving so many people in this community, and they are serving people in surrounding communities as well. Okay. Thank you. Any, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tim. I was happy to yield to your Jim. No, 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 no. Thank go you. ahead. I recognize you, Tim. Now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, you're so welcome. Uh, <laughs> I will point out that we have a public uh, hearing on these Warren articles in two days on Thursday. Uh, Chris Munn will be motivated to attend and tell us all about his activities in this space if we vote not to recommend it. We can change our vote Thursday night. So, therefore, I suggest we all vote not to recommend it and inspire Chris to come in and tell us about his activities. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. On that, who, I would like to ask for a vote. Those in favor of recommending this particular Warren article, please raise your hands. We have Sonny. We have Maureen. We have okay. Danielle. Those opposed, please raise your hands. We have Brian and Steve LaBranche, Mike Fluff, Steve Henderson, uh, Mr. Jones, and David, and I... The very thing that Tim said, it will motivate Chris to come in and explain and, and validate and make a case. And we have hmm. abstentions would be Regina. Okay. So three, did you get that? We have three, three yeses. Voting in favor are Mr. Sonny, Travis, Danielle, Marie, and, and Maureen. Okay. Then you had the others voting nay with Regina Barnes abstaining. All set, Barbara? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Yes, sir. We're done with the Warren articles, apparently. Yes, we are. Um, and we've got a... Well, let's, unless some come in between now and midnight, that could happen. And then we'll find, about, yeah. find out about them on... on well, I remember we're done tonight. We right, are. Okay. That's true. <laughs> Sorry for that lack of qualifier. Um, yes, thank you. <laughs> have to be accurate now. So, Mr. Chairman, we've got a 10-point... Document from the finance director, Christy Pulliam. Yes, and she has uh, asked to present. And I wanted to ask you procedurally how you want to address this. I would, I would, would you like, like to address all ten I would as like, one vote. I would or? like. Well, actually, what we're going to do is Christy's going to come up and explain this entire. She's yeah. going to make a presentation to us at that point. Um, we can decide if what we want to do for motions and changes, but we don't need a, she's going to do a presentation first, so we don't need a motion. So please, Christy, if you would present and explain what all of this is about, and then we'll have so much knowledge, Tim, that we can decide where we're going from there, okay? So it's my all. Question, the purpose of my question was, yes. there's a lot of material here. There is. And whether we're going to have Chrissy talk about the entire scope and ask a question about the entire scope or whether we're going to segment it so that we can manage it in smaller pieces. 
that was the question I was requesting the chair to address. Okay. Is whether we better manage it in pieces or should we better manage it in its entirety? Okay. Thank you, Tim. So, I did I the explanation I gave was that sufficient? Apparently, she's you decided going to, to deal with it in, in its entirety. She's going to make a presentation. That's how I interpret it. The floor is all yours, Christy. All right, so you guys received yesterday um, a document which I had gone through and looked at all of the uh, motions that were made by the committee in regards to the budget lines. Um, at the last meeting, I had provided you with a summary of the adjustments which have been added to because at your meeting you made some additional adjustments to the budget. I had given you a summary sheet show it with the DRA format as that was the way that the committee was making some of the motions. However, when I went back and looked, not all of the motions were made in the exact format of the DRA. So if it's your desire to clean that up, we can do that. And I um, also found one line item in the minutes, just looking at your minutes online where the amount that was written in the minutes was incorrect or what didn't match the budget amount by like $500. So that was another adjustment that I came up with. So basically on here, I just went through and I explained in detail to you all of the adjustments. Some of them are adjustments that the committee has made along the way when you were doing your budget review. Others are proposed adjustments that the uh, management has come up with when reviewing the budget. Uh, the gasoline and diesel lines, we had to come and we, I wait, ended up waiting until the end of the year. I know I had said something about a Christmas present, but I decided to wait that additional week so that we could have the exact 2017 gallons and have a basis to present with you. So all of those adjustments are on here too. So they're not adjustments that you've made. I want to make sure that that's clear, that, but they're proposed adjustments from what you guys have talked about, wanting to hone in on those gasoline and diesel gallons mm -hmm. to use and the price per gallon. So if we go down through here, um, you'll see that the first adjustment was for the $620. That was to the town clerk's salary, and that was made by the committee at their meeting on 1214. The next adjustment that was made um, was made by the committee again, and that was on 1219, and that was to the tax collector's salary for $577. And then under personnel administration, whenever a wage line is changed, there are um, items in that section w which would change too. So that was, there was changes to the Social Security, the Medicare, and the Group 1 retirement, and those totaled $227. That went up, correct? Correct, yep. Those were all increases, sorry. The first three that we just talked about were all increases. Under cemetery, I am just pointing out there that the gasoline and diesel lines across the entire budget changed, and that would be a reduction across not just under the cemetery but across the whole budget of five thousand and eighty two dollars so by uh waiting until december seeing how many gallons were used coming up with our the analysis that i provided to you guys showing you how i calculated the gallons for 2018 and how we came up with the pricing um we are finding a reduction in gasoline and diesel lines totaling five thousand and eighty two dollars let's see uh let's when I was at the meeting, um, I didn't put the date there, sorry, but I had been at a meeting when we were talking about insurances and the liability and general insurance and the workers' compensation insurance. The committee uh, adjusted those amounts because I had actual numbers, so we had a reduction there of $89,665. And um, you guys already voted on that one. Okay. And then at the meeting on 11-19, the committee had voted to add 30000 to the police department budget for a policy review and update. In the information in front of you, we're proposing that you guys remove that 30000 because we were able to do it with 2017 money. Once again, that's one, another one where you guys haven't chosen mm -hmm. to do, but if you would like to do so, we have included that with 2017. Also, under the police department and the radio maintenance, he... The police chief had put in $18,000 for six portable radios. We were able to purchase those in 2017, so we would 
um, propose that you guys remove that $18,000. Okay, so that line four, is it four and six so far are the ones that are going to need motions. The others we've already made, we've already made motions and passed. Right. Okay. I think in the end, once we finish going through all of this, I literally have all of, um, I have all of the numbers in regards to all of, if we, uh, Tim had been making motions along the DRA format that we have mm -hmm. here. So what I've done is I, uh, after I go through this whole summary, I literally have another sheet that shows all of the lines that you guys have voted on, what you have voted on, and what the changes are if you agree that these are all the changes that you want to be made. I have all the motions listed out that Excellent. you would need to make if okay. you would like to make these okay. changes. Thank you very much. Okay, so continuing on. Mr. Chairman? Numbers, yes, go ahead. Um, I think, have you concluded, Christy? No. Uh, no, I'm almost done, though. Okay, sorry. The fire department um, was the next one. They had $20,000 in their 18 proposed budget for the starboard Starboard Motor on Honda Motor for Marine One, mm -hmm. and they also had thirty-three thousand four hundred and five dollars for rest uh, remediation to ladder one. That is all purchases that were able to be made in two thousand and seventeen. So that can be reduced if you choose. Um, the budget committee at their meeting on November twenty-first removed sixty thousand for a new compactor, and we were able to. I just giving you an update that, that you have already done that, and we were able to purchase that in seventeen. The next adjustment was made by the budget committee on November twenty-first to redu reduce the waste hauling by fifty-one thousand six hundred and sixty-three dollars. That was recommended by the DPW director. And the last two adjustments are related to debt service, which was discussed at the committee's meeting on 12-14. At that time, the proposed debt service was $2,434,999. At this time, I have found further reductions in that because we um, no better the bond sale is going to take place in January, and we, have, uh, we know we will not have a payment in 2018 for principal, but we will have an interest payment only. So you can reduce that line further to $2,410,786. Um, so that kind of gives you a little breakdown of all of those adjustments, <coughs> gives you explanations to all the adjustments that are on the <coughs> sheet here that I had provided to you guys. Um, I think I gave you a copy of this last time, but I've updated it with some additional changes that were made right. and some proposed changes. Okay, hold on, Tim. I just want to point out, Christy, under item eight, um, but I think that um, the, w the word remove, um, remove the 60,000 for a new compactor, um, but then in the next line, um, you explain it better. Uh, we actually reduced the line. Um, we didn't, so, so to speak, say we don't want this compactor. What we sort of it was reduced the line because we were going to try to get it out of 2017. Just for clarification, okay. So, please, um, you wanted to continue on with the the second document. Go ahead, please. Um, I guess if you guys have any questions, then I have given you all of the gasoline and diesel information in regards okay, to so it, how we came up with those numbers. Okay, so go ahead, Tim. You have a question. Thank you, uh, Christy. Do you have a uh, a number for the surplus for 2017? Not yet. Close though. Very, yeah. very close. We won't have a number until the audit anyway, but I'll have an unaudited number within like yeah. the next week probably. Do you, have, do you have a gut feel right now? Um, in the expenditure side of it, I haven't looked at revenue to be honest with you because I focus more on the expenditure piece at the end of the year. Right. I'm just gonna, my best guess is between three and 500,000. Okay, and then the revenues if coming in higher, that will make that number larger as well. Correct, yeah. Okay. And revenues are usually a lot tighter only because we are able to change those right up until November, November when we set yeah. the tax mm -hmm. rate. And the variables there, the big variable at that point is the rooms and meals, and the state always knows that by that point. So The um, debt service uh, reduction, uh, yes. among others that might have been had implications in the default budget. Those changes have been made by the Board of Selectmen? Yeah, the Board of Selectmen voted last night on a new default okay. number, so the default, um, all of the adjustments that I'm proposing for the committee to make to like gasoline and stuff, we adjusted all those last night. Okay. We made the changes for the insurances, um, the changes for the debt service at the Board of Selectmen meeting okay. last night. So now the default budget is at like 5,300 and something dollars over the 17 budget. 
So you, you you consider all the adjustments to be done with the default budget? For the budget. default budget, yes. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned in your presentation that you have uh, individual motions for us to make to make the adjustments that you're recommending? Yes, I have. What I did is um, if, if, if the committee uh, desire to do it in the format of the DRA that mm -hmm. we have it done, is. I have all of those, I have them all listed here along, and then all the ones that have already been made correctly if these are the only changes that want to be proposed for the budget. Okay, so at this point, that's... There's please. several of them, just yeah. for the record. All right, so please proceed. First. Do you want... I'm, I'm done with my presentation. I guess the next point would be is if the committee is satisfied with all of these changes that we made, then I can provide I you with the different motions that I need to be made I would, each of the items. I would move that each of the line items that Christy made adjustments to relative to the DRA format uh, be approved. Okay. Not, not including the bottom line, which is not a line item. Okay. So, Barbara, moved by Tim and seconded by Steve, Steve Henderson. And the motion again specifically, Tim? Is to approve all the adjustments that Christy has presented in, in uh, both email and paperwork tonight. Okay, the 10 adjustments. Barbara, did you get a copy of that as well? You do have it, okay. So you know what 10 adjustments we're talking about. A motion made and seconded. All those that approve, please raise your hand. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Tim, did you vote on that? Yes or no? Um, I did not, but I will vote uh, in favor of all the line items. Yeah, now yeah. we have to deal, I assume, with the bottom line adjustment. Well, hold on. You have now motions for us to make. You're going to go through this DRA. Is that the next step that you right, thought? Right, because some of the motions that when I went back and looked at the minutes, some well, that of was them... my motion was covering those adjustments. Okay, all of these all adjustments? Yeah, all of them. Okay. Yeah. That's not just the 10 on that sheet, though, because this is literally listing it out by the line items, like the DRA form. So it's telling you, you know. That's what I was referencing in my motion. Okay, sorry. Yeah, very but it was, someone said something about the 10 adjustments, and the 10 adjustments, okay. Okay, so that. It was not by the motion. Okay. That sheet. This sheet right here, that breaks it down by DRA. My motion to adopt those line item adjustments, both in terms of verbiage and dollar amounts. Okay. Okay. Your yep. motion then, Tim, is to include this? No, that. Hold it up, Christy. That sheet. That's it. And it, this will basically reflect yeah. your summary that you have right. there. Right, right. Okay. Well, why am I missing So this? we just took care of a lot of that right there, that. right? So all we have left oh, is Tim's really to deal with the bottom line, line, correct? Right. In your estimation? Well, this will come down to a bottom line. Yeah. Right, but that's that's, yeah. the, that's the number we put on the ballot. The tally what we put on the ballot. I'm confused with this. See, I don't have that particular sheet. That's why I'm a little confused. That, that. This particular sheet basically lines up exactly with, if you go past your adjustment seats here, and if you look at this form, it has two pages. It says some one and two on the bottom. It says DRA format. Somehow, Christy, okay. the one I passed me doesn't right here. have that. Two pages. Yeah, I, I know, but... DRA format. Yeah. What she was holding up is a summary of it. I know, but I don't have that page, Tim. That's why I'm a little confused. I understand here. that. Okay. And hopefully the confusion is gone now. It is now, but okay, Mike great. has helped. We're sharing this particular one. We're going to, all the confusion is gone. Thank you. <laughs> so, Christy, Christy summarized very quickly. You have to listen very carefully. I do. Okay. <laughs> Where are we here, Tim? I believe that we need to do the tally vote on the bottom line budget. All right. So, I would like to. Uh, I guess make the motion, and Mr. Henderson will second that, for the bottom line budget number of? 27225312 Okay. I'll second. Thank you, Christy. That's I'd like to speak to that if I could. Hold on. We have a motion by Tim Jones and seconded second, by please. Steve Henderson. And we're talking about the bottom line, Budcom and Delivery. Well, it says Budcom and Delivery. Read that again, Christy. Yep, yeah, it's $27 million. $225,312. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, discussion, please? Yes. Tim? Uh, this this is the vote that will go on the ballot as to whether we recommend the budget or not. This is the sum total of our work that's actually be expressed on the ballot. Yes. We, is that we true? recommend this budget or not? Okay. This is the number now. Unless the adjustments are made, yes. Okay. This right. is the adjustments. number. Well, we only make adjustments at the public hearing Okay. after someone speaks on the issue or a line item, really. Unless somebody decides tonight to... Um, well, I'm taking after tonight. Just to okay. After tonight, yeah. right. Yeah. But that's the number we're looking uh, at And right then, now. of course, it could be changed at the later session as well by the 
legislative body there. Um, but barring those entities changing it, this is the, the vote we're about to take is going to go on the warrant That's as our recommendation. There you go. Now, we cannot not recommend this because it wouldn't go on the ballot at all, right? So we, ha we have to have a majority vote to recommend. Uh, and I cannot support this bottom line number. There are items in this budget that I am absolutely by principle opposed to, uh, and therefore I will not be voting for this okay, that's until, we, until we take those items up. And I understand, my understanding, my sense of this body is the body is not willing to take those items out that I find so deeply offensive, so I will not waste the body's time by making motions to remove them. But I wanted you to know that is why I'm voting against this bottom line. Okay, there are you. items that are offensive in here, mm -hmm. not just to me personally, but to the good principles of government. And I don't address that to the work of Christy. She's been excellent, very professional. And Fred has been outstanding uh, in terms of his help uh, as well. I'm not addressing my comments to either of those individuals. I don't want that interpretation to be uh, thought of at all. But there are line at, or money being spent on things that are uh, just uh, abhorrent. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Tim, for that opinion of yours. Um, and we all appreciate. Now, everybody here, of course, vote your conscience. And I'm going to ask for a vote right now in that bottom line number. Sonny, make it short, please. Well, okay. Two quick questions. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, the, Tim. Go the ahead. $3.3 million in the surplus. What are the areas that have it been? I don't know what the 3.3 .3 million. Okay, is the budget to. was 20 mm -hmm. last, last year. It's the actual November. The November financial we were 637,000 under and spent. And through November, you spent 23.5. In the in, at my November financials, which are on the website, and you all received copies of, we were 600. That's what I ran upstairs to get. We were 600 and. Um, $637,546 underspent, so I'm not sure where the $3 million is coming from. Okay, your, your On my 2017 budget was $26.8 million. Through the end of November, you, the, you spent $23.5 million. I'm looking at the general fund DRA format. Let Christy see if she can figure it out. Come out with a number. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this. That's at the in. That's our expenditures through November. Let's see. Here. That's as of eleven thirty. Because that includes debt and. When we report on our financials, we don't include right. debt and stuff. Yeah, 637 is yeah. what we were, and my prediction is that we're going to be about three to five hundred thousand under. That was what uh, okay. Mr. Jones asked earlier. So that's my best guess at this point. Just we call me Joe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. Yeah, I know we weren't supposed to call you Joe. Uh, <laughs> Sam. Sam. That works. The other question, Sonny, go yeah, ahead. The other question I have is <coughs> that apparently these two outstanding bonds, not not counting. I say you nine you separate. The two million two point three million dollar bond. I don't re recall what it's for to you. This is the budget? I have my budget book right here. It's long term bonds and no it's principal. Oh, those are the principal payments for all of the bonds that I, we have. I if I you look in your debt service of the budget, it lists yeah. out all of them. They're all listed right there. I think there's probably what about ten maybe? Let's see. Debt service. Yeah. They're all listed in your original budget if you're curious in regards to what those principal payments are made up of. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's eleven. There's ten in there because the one point one uh Lafayette just got removed in one of the motions that we just made. So there's ten um outstanding principal payments that make up that number. Okay. All set, Sonny? Okay, we're going to vote on this now. All those in favor, raise your hand, please. We have Brian and Sonny and Danielle, Maureen, 
Regina Steepler Branch and is yours up or down? No, okay. Patrick, and oh, okay. And well, I didn't know. <laughs> and those opposed, please. We have uh, David, Tim Jones, Steve Henderson, and Mr. Plouffe. So four against. So the re it is the majority is to recommend. Thank you very much. What's the tally on that? Six four. Was there any abstentions? Uh, no, no abstentions. So we okay. have six four. Six there are four ten zero. of us here tonight. Ginny Bridal is, yeah. of course, um, she's at her own meeting tonight. The school board is having a meeting as well, so she's not here for that reason. Um, okay, now, having done that, I believe that we're finished. We're all done with numbers, I think. I think we are. We have a... Thank you, Fred. Appreciate all your help on Tim, that. Tim, hold on, hold on. That's we have it. now... <coughs> we have now... <coughs> we have now um, finished the school, the... Um, the town, municipal, all of the money warrant articles, and of course now, as far as this committee is concerned, we now put forth these numbers to the public hearing on Thursday night, and then after that, of course, it moves over to the legislative body. So, um, so yes. Yeah, so, thank you very much for your help. I, hold on. I want to say that it's been a privilege um, with working with both of you. All of the department heads, all of the town employees, everybody has been absolutely spectacular this year in developing this budget. And so I really want to thank you very much for all of your help. Thank you, everybody here on this board, uh, this committee as well, for all of the help, all of the questions. Um, and we've, we've done very well. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Tim, you wanted to add to that? No, I think Mr. Moore did, and I'll add to that later. Oh, uh, David, did you want to add something to that? Please? I have a question. Go ahead. Thursday night, mm -hmm. we have voted previously on stuff that we just got through, you know, the last X number of months. We are allowed to change our vote at Thursday's meeting, correct? We being the budget members. You can make a motion. What happens, uh, the whole idea of having a, a public hearing, and if I might be wrong, please correct me, anybody that uh, knows better, is that what we're going to be doing is allowing the public, we'll be going article by article, we'll be doing reviewing both of the school budget and Warren articles um, and the town Warren articles, which of course will include the town budget, and it'll be a public hearing where people can get up and make a case. Right. Uh, case in point would be the Warren article tonight that, um, that we the majority voted against, um, and that would allow Mr. Uh, Mum, uh, Chris Munns, to come up and make a case. Now, if you voted in the majority, then you can uh, reconsider, make a motion to reconsider. Correct. Okay, so that's, that's, all I wanted to know. that's the answer to your question, and that's sort of information for the public as well to realize what we're doing. And everybody certainly is invited, the town of Hampton, please come to the uh, public hearing, and if you've got something to say, that's your opportunity to say it. The format of this budget committee has not been uh, that we allow public comment, as they do, for instance, on the selectmen's meetings on a weekly basis, because our format's a little different. We do a workshop. But now, this is the opportunity. People that have in the past said to me, gee, can I be on the agenda? This is your opportunity. It's not a closed, um, it's not closed to the public. This is, a, they have their opportunity, and that'll be on Thursday night. So if you've got something to say, I will recognize you, and I will listen to and allow you to speak. So please make sure you do that. Sonny, you had one more thing yeah, to add? Yeah, I just heard you say that you have to be an affirmative vote to move for a reconsideration. So if somebody abstains on a vote, you can't move for reconsideration. That's, I would say that that's the way we've done it in the past. Yeah, it's, I believe that. Yeah. That's that's Robert's the way words. that it's 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 a. Um, That's the way we've done it in the past. It's not only the way we've done it in the past, but I'm not saying that we adopted ever officially Robert's rules. But that's Ro Robert's rules. Okay, that would be going along with that. Is That's that the way incorrect? we've done it in the past. However, <laughs> you have decided uh, earlier in this year that the rule was, however you vote, 
you can make a motion for reconsideration at any time. Up until that, the that, public hearing. Yeah. Well, Up until the public hearing and look back and watch the minutes in the video because I made sure to make note of that then. Up until the public hearing. So all through this process, if anybody has wanted to make a change, you've had the opportunity. Now when we go to the public hearing tomorrow night, the way that the, the rule that we're going to use is the rule that we've always used. And watch the meetings because I remember that. Particularly because you're the one that made the motion. I especially appreciate your numerous times of you completing my sentences. Oh, okay. You're most certainly welcome. If I hear you, <laughs> if I hear you right, you just said I couldn't change what I have if I wanted uh, no, to No, that's something. not what I said. That's not, not, not what I said. If you voted in the majority, then you can make reconsider. Whether you voted yes or no, if you're in the majority, you can make a vote to reconsider okay. if you're in that majority. So if you're in the minority, you cannot do it. That's right. exactly right. You cannot okay. make the motion, nor can you second the motion. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I may yes, continue, sir. please. Oh, go ahead. You cannot make, no one can make a motion to change anything at the public hearing unless a member of the public actually speaks to that topic. If no one speaks on that topic, we can't do anything. Thank you, Tim. All right, that's very important to keep in mind, okay? Right. Thank you, Tim. That is something very important to keep in mind as well. Now, as I understand it, uh, I'm afraid you probably know this better than I do at the moment, um, at the public hearing, we're only obliged to listen to citizens that don't answer correctly. Citizens and officials. Right. Well, citizens are, citizens are all required to. Traditionally, we let anyone talk, right? You can't allow any person to talk. You, you, you uh, just like a town meeting. You right. have you have quite a number of public officials here who are appointed, right. who in fact do not live in town. They are not registered voters. Right. Uh, you can prohibit them from talking. In which case, most of us won't show up because there's no need for <laughs> us to be there. Right. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that you know we need to have a citizen actually speak to these things in order for it to be considered. Uh, input sufficient to reconsider our vote. I don't believe that's correct. Okay. Uh, that, that's fine. I just want to get your opinion on that. Uh, and as a, as a, I'm not going to dispute it. I don't know no, either no. way. Uh, if you have, for instance, if someone says something that's incorrect and I stand up to correct it, I have the right to do that. Uh, uh, and if it means that you have to vote to change something because information is now available you didn't have before and I'm not a registered voter, you can still vote to change it. Because anyone happened to say something. Anyone who is allowed to address the board. Right. And that's the, the committee. Yeah. And the committee gets to decide that, just like the little that's session. Correct. And and you're, that's, you're, you're we're fine. on the same page. Okay. And finally, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I want to say I don't spread my praise all over town like you do. Oh. I am point specific. <laughs> Fred, good job. I really appreciate your help this year. Thank you. Christy, absolutely spectacularly professional job throughout the year, especially these last couple months have been intense. I very much appreciate your work. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful evening. Chairman, could yes. you clarify for the public the place and time of this meeting on Thursday? The public, the public hearing will be at the yeah. Hampton Academy. I think I was going to actually mention that under okay. other business. Yeah, I actually do have it under other business. Excellent. Okay. So, moving right along now, we have on our next number six approved minutes, I believe. Okay, we're going to be approving the minutes. Um, we have okay, we we have um, a lot of people are getting up, but in any case, no, we still have we still have a um, quorum here. So, if you would please, David, David, could you please take it outside if you want to talk? We're still running a meeting here. Okay, no, no, we still have an agenda to finish. So. If you would, if you want to talk to him, go outside. But right now, we still have a meeting to finish. I thought it was over. Oh, sorry. No, we're not done. Now we have minutes to approve. I have down here November twenty-first. Barbara made the correction. She changed the spelling of a single word, and that has no. And now it's it's complete. Thank you very much, Barbara. Those minutes are. Would somebody please make a motion? For those minutes to be approved, Sonny makes the motion. Do I have a second? Mike? Yeah. Mike, second. Okay. Approval of minutes for uh, November 21st, please. Raise your hand. So we have uh, David and Steve Henderson, Mike Plouffe, Steve LeBranch, uh, Regina, 
And were you here for those? Okay. Danielle, uh, Sonny, you were a yes. Okay. Brian? I will abstain. Abstaining. Brian is abstaining, and so is Maureen Buckley, because they weren't here for that meeting. And any nays? Seeing none? Okay. The next set of minutes would be the December 14th minutes that are the most recent ones that Barbara prepared for us. Um, does anybody have any changes for the December 14th uh, min minutes, please? And I believe I have a change. The change would be that, um, that Mike Plouffe and Brian Lapham were both uh, excused from that meeting. That meeting or the 19th? Oh, I'm sorry. That would be the 19th, right? 19th. Okay, I'm sorry. No, that you're right, Barbara. No. So, does anybody have any changes for the December 14th minutes? Seeing none, do I have a motion? For the motion. Regina makes the motion and seconded by Mike Plouffe. All those in favor of approving the minutes for the 14th, please raise your hand. We have uh, David and we have Steve Henderson and Mike Plouffe. Uh, Regina, Steve LeBranch, uh, Sonny, and Brian, those uh, Nene, and those abstaining would be Maureen, and Danielle, which, you abstaining? Okay. And Tim, what did you decide to do? I had my hand out for yay. Oh, okay. So Tim was a yay, Barbara. All right. Now we have the minutes of December 19th, and any changes for the December 19th minutes? Seeing none, um, could December I have a motion? December 19th is not on the agenda. I know, but those minutes were sent out. Yes, but it wasn't on agenda, so I didn't read them. All right, well, we're going to put off the minutes for the 19th because okay. uh, they weren't on the agenda. Thank you for pointing that out, Tim. You're absolutely right, <coughs> as always. So, uh, <coughs> almost always. Hmm. Um, Except when you complete my sentence. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm right. No, okay, so now we have uh, next on the agenda is a an update from the selectmen's Representative Regina, do you have anything to tell us? How, how was Florida? Very it nice. Was good. Now you just got back <laughs> but today. I but, did. <laughs> you know. But I did want to let everyone know that the Board of Selectmen will be having a public hearing for the wastewater treatment plant, and that's going to be Tuesday, the 16th, at six o'clock. And I'm 98 percent sure it's going to be down here. Tuesday, the 16th at 6 p.m. Okay. What is good. what is the format of this presentation? Well, we're required to have it's a public, public hearing now. Public okay, hearing so it's a public hearing. Okay, yeah. thank you. It's going to be a public hearing. Public hearing. Thank you very much, Regina. Anything else? That's all I okay. have. Okay. Um, and Maureen, do you have anything to tell us about the Village District? No, I, I just, uh, the yes and no. I, I'm concerned. Um, we spent so much time tonight talking about the flooding potential of the grist mill and I'm really concerned that we're not talking at all about the flooding going on at the beach. And I know you keep saying to me, there's really nothing we can do, that, but somebody's got to do something. Yeah, I agree with you, Maureen. The pictures, I'm sure you all saw them, uh, it was atrocious. Something, we need to do something. Right. And I'm just saying before, we're very concerned about the grist mill. I'd like to be as concerned about the people on Mooring Drive and Manchester. I agree with you completely, Maureen. And as a matter of fact, the um, the conversation has to change because uh, <laughs> we can do whatever we want in this town, but the focus really, really needs to be on flooding. And the the, the only when I have mentioned about flooding, the um, how much if there's any limitations, it's just that it's such a big problem that we need the help of the state of New Hampshire state. and the federal <coughs> government. To help us because it's it's just such an immense project, um, and that was the only thing that I believe that yes, the people have to speak now and start talking, mm -hmm. but it, but also kick it up to the next level, um, you know, state representatives and make them aware of it, and the state legislator, and as well um, your congressional members to email them, to send them um, letters, to phone call, you know, call them up and and tell them the concerns because the, um, from what I'm seeing, uh, people that don't live on the ocean, I live on the ocean and I'm at ground zero and I'm watching this thing happen and in the last couple of years things have been happening that, um, that are a little bit frightful. The storm that we had last year, the bomb cyclone 
um, was an incredible um, experience for a lot of people. Flooding that, um, when we usually have a king high tide, it's, it can be 10 point seven, uh, in, uh, 10 feet 7 inches, but it's usually, it's not, doesn't even hit 11 feet. This particular um, storm, the measurement, and we have that buoy now that we are able to take these measurements in the harbor, the tide was 13 feet 6. So you ended up with uh, 3 feet of water on Ashworth Ave. You ended up with water in people's houses this time, not just going underneath them and creating islands for each house on the west side of Ashworth. Water was also going up the uh, lettered streets halfway up. You had water, yeah, you had water going into the first floors of people's houses. You had a lot of vehicles that were lost. You had people that got stranded and had to be uh, saved, um, I guess, yeah. rescued yeah, from, rescues. yeah, from, from Ashworth Ave because they drove into water that, uh, that, it, that was too deep. Uh, many vehicles were lost. A lot of damage. That's just a, f a little bit of uh, what's to come. So it's, and, and that's not talking about the water that was pouring over the wall on Ocean Boulevard, flooding um, the south and north lanes of Ocean Boulevard. Church Street was closed. There was an incredible amount of flooding, a lot of water. If, if there's one thing, um, if, you know, we talk about building a wall for the border, um, billions of dollars, we're going to need to be spending the federal government billions of dollars to protect the East Coast, the residents, the properties, all of them, <coughs> the amount of taxable property that's on the, along the coast is <coughs> incredible. And that is not something that's, uh, that it's interesting. It was talked about a year ago, two years ago. Well, that's going to happen 100 years from now, so don't worry about it. We'll all be, uh, we won't be around. But you know what? I'm seeing this as a thing that, in just in the last five years, never mind the 25, I've lived at the beach, in the last five years I've seen things that I've never seen all of the previous years. And I think in the next five years I'm going to see more things and I'm going to say, gee, I never saw that happen. It's, you know, they, they talk about uh, $33 million to replace that, uh, the, the bridge going over the harbor uh, and tens of millions of dollars to fix Ocean Boulevard at doing a traffic study and putting in roundabouts and, and changing the tra traffic flows and putting up stoplights. It's not, you're not going to need any of that right. if you don't <laughs> have some protection to hold back the Atlantic Ocean. So, um, in any case, having said all of that, which is probably a little too much, yeah. Tim, did you want to comment? I concur. It was a little too much, um, causing me to have to respond to some of it. Um, as you pointed out, the streets that are north of the uh, marina and west of Ashworth always flood. Uh, so it was nothing new. Maybe some went into their homes or whatever, but you know, they bought homes there, they know the risk, or they should, ought to have known the risk there of getting themselves flooded at an extremely high tide, since those streets flood all the time and have for decades. Nothing new. With regard to um, Ashworth Avenue and uh, the leaded streets flooding, I'm not terribly surprised. My street never floods, yet it got flooded. And you know how it got flooded? Well, it's coming in from the harbor, you know, where we have our uh, Hampton Navy ramp there? Yes. Come crashing right up that ramp, right on Harbor Road, right through the, the gully <coughs> they hold there, right up onto my street. See? And guess what? All the drains we have in the street, covered with snow from the snow plows. So I had nowhere to go, except I had incredible neighbors that came out and dug out the drains. Had it not happened, things would have gotten worse. My suspicion is that's how Ashworth got flooded and the leaded streets got flooded, was all of those drains that are there were simply snow-capped. Well, and so, yeah, there's something very simple to do. You know, uncap the damn things after you plow. Now, that's I know... if you have drains. Right, that's not all of no West, West of Ashworth, North of the Marine, they don't have drains. That's why they flood regularly. But the uh, Ashworth does have drains, right? And the lead streets, some of them do. Uh, and, and they're tilted anyway, so they'll come down 
uh, and that's part of the reason why west of Ashworth gets it. But there are things we can do for some of those areas, but for those west of Ashworth, okay, they're always flooded, all right, and it's going to require, you know, if we're going to do anything, uh, it's going to require they get drainage, much like my street got drainage decades ago before I bought it. wasn't going to buy until they did, so they did, and I bought it. <laughs> But in terms of holding back the Atlantic Ocean, give it up, Steve. You don't do that. Oh, you know, okay. Venice, Italy, Amsterdam, you know, these cities are underwater, yeah. under sea level. Been that way. And you know what? They do not hold back the ocean. They manage it. Thank you, All right. So holding back the ocean is not even <laughs> a, 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 possibility. A, Thank you, a plausible consideration. Okay. Yep. And also, if you put bulkheads along the, the river, mm -hmm. which is where some of that water is coming from, all you're doing is preventing the water from coming into the streets west of Ashworth. That means that water's going to go okay. elsewhere, yeah, like well, over on Route 1A. Okay, hold on, hold on a minute. Yes. It has to be managed as a whole. Yes, it does. Now, oh, of course, not, hold on, hold on. Now, you're saying that there's, you, you know, I've been to some other meetings, perhaps, that you haven't been to, and maybe you're not aware that down in Salisbury, Massachusetts, they had a, uh, 15 years ago, they started working on a possible solution because, see, they had the same problem with the streets in the marsh and the marsh water coming up and flooding the houses and the streets. So they worked with the federal government. It took 15 years, and they worked with the Army Corps of Engineers, and they just finished building a wall that holds back the water. So, yes, it does That's work. What, it's pushing the water into our property now, no, God damn it. No. <laughs> well, well, where's it going then? The solution is... Where's it going then? Tim, Tim, hold on. The solution is, is that there are solutions, okay? And that the thing is that we have to start addressing it now. Can the same thing be extended all the way up to wherever the high point is so that we have the same protection? Can it be done? Yes. Is it going to cost a lot of money? I bet you it's going to cost a lot. Is it going to take a lot of planning? Probably. But that's where we have a to go. A wall only pushes the water to go someplace okay. else. So. Okay. Yeah, oh. yeah, exactly. That's one of the places it might be going. Okay. Yeah. Brian, go ahead. Um, just to follow up what you were talking about, my landlord lost three apartments on I Street, mm -hmm. all okay. from the flood. Right, because the water went in. Then that never. But in any case, so having said all of that, Maureen, did you have anything else you wanted no, to add to the village right. district's report? Thank you very much, Brian. Um, did you are you prepared tonight to do, give us an update of the CIP? No. Okay, thank you. So we'll put that off until the future. We did get copies of the CIP from um, from the planning department. They was emailed to all of us, but we're not prepared to do that tonight. We can do it after the public hearing. We'll have some additional time. Yeah. So, other business. I want to point out that um, that we have the public hearing at 7 p.m. at the Hampton Academy. The snow date is 1:16, but I don't believe we'll be using the snow date. Um, do we have any other business? Seeing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? Regina have, and Regina makes the motion. Brian seconds it. All those in favor, please raise your hands. It's unanimous. Thank you very much, Channel 22. And we are adjourned. We are adjourned <laughs> at.